Hi everyone, it's Monica and welcome back to TaylorMade Cards for You. Well, with Mother's Day just around the corner, I wanted to share with you a new kit that I have in the shop called English Vintage Florals. And I'm not kidding you, this kit is beautiful. It is created using some uh, vintage wallpaper that I got. Um, I don't even know where I got it, maybe in an antique shop. Um, but it just has some beautiful floral papers that make wonderful spring and Mother's Day cards. And I wanted to go ahead and put together a couple of Mother's Day cards using this very intricate die that I got from Life's Craft. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what I did to make this intricate die a little easier to work with. Now for my uh, prototype, I used some of the white paper that you see on the card on the top right hand side. And these are two of the other pieces that are in the kit. And I wanted to just pick some a uh, couple of vibrant pieces, but to be honest with you, they're all very vibrant and beautiful. So it was really hard to choose. But I ended up going with these two cards here just because I liked how they had sort of that vintage look to them. And I thought they would make beautiful Mother's Day cards. So when I first started playing with this die, it's very intricate. And while I have an easy hack to be able to get out of my uh, die, it was a little bit more difficult when I went to glue it onto my paper. And that's when I had the idea of using the double-sided uh, tape that I just shared with you a minute ago. I went ahead and I added it to the cardstock before I ran it through my die cut machine and it made it a whole lot easier to adhere. So I went ahead and I cut out a couple of pieces here and I measured the die just to see exactly how much paper I would need. And I wanna say I used three and three fourths by six, I believe is what I did, but you could just measure it up against the die. And then for the inside, I cut an extra piece of paper uh, measuring four inches by five and a quarter, just so I would have coordinating inside and out. All right, so here's that big roll of uh, double-sided tape that I'm sharing with you again. And um, it is awesome. It, I got it, I want to say on Amazon, but there's so many places that you can get it. Um, and it makes it really great to be able to uh, make cardstocks into stickers. Now this little mat that I'm playing with here <laughs> underneath my uh, tape is a hack that I'm trying out to try to keep my cards from moving around when I am putting them together. So I'm gonna try out this hack a few more times to see if I like it. And if I do, then I'll go ahead and I'll share it with you. So if you're interested in seeing what this mat is or having me do a video on it to share with you my hack for having your cardstock not be able to move around, just leave a note in the comments or better yet, take a guess what I'm using. All right. So after I had my sticker sheet adhered to my cardstock, I went ahead and I ran it through my die cut machine. And as you can see, it came out pretty good. Um, I have a few pieces here that I needed to punch out, but for the most part, I was able to get all those intricate pieces out. And again, what I ended up doing is I ran it through several times. I went back and forth a few times on my uh, big shot because I wanted to make sure it cut out all those little pieces. And then once I had the outside frame cut out, I went ahead and I added some of those dryer sheets, that hack that I shared with you a little while ago, um, underneath it just to pull off the extra pieces. But remember, you have a, a full sheet of sticker attached, so it may not completely come off with the dryer sheet hack, but if you do run it through your die cut machine a few times, I found that it came out pretty good. And as you can see, once I had all those little pieces cut out, I was able to add it to the top part of my A2 card. And then I just had to get my scissors and do a little trimming on each side of the card to get that excess hangover off. All right, so um, the other thing I wanted to do with this card is to add a matching strip of designer paper on the bottom, just because I felt that there was too much white showing on this and I wanted it to uh, you know, be a finished front. So I took some of that extra designer paper cardstock that I had and I wanna say I cut off about an inch, but you can figure out how much you need. It really wasn't uh, brain surgery. It was just a matter of figuring out how big I wanted my strip to be, and then I cut it off. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere it here with some uh, glue, and then I'll trim off the extra on the side. So as you can see, it's a beautiful card here with just the paper, but I wanted to go ahead a step further 
on this. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here as soon as I get this strip glued down. Okay, so once I had the strip glued down, uh, then I wanted to go ahead and tie that top part of the uh, die to the bottom strip. And I had the idea of just pulling out a heart punch and punching a heart using uh, some of that extra paper that I had that still had the sticker sheet. So it ended up being a sticker heart, which was perfect because then I didn't have to use any of my glue. And I thought it tied the top piece and the bottom piece together really nicely. So with the extra sheet of paper um, that I'm going to show you right here, as you can see, I have enough on the designer paper to cut out two hearts. So initially I only cut out one heart and it was the opposite paper because I didn't necessarily want it to be the same designer paper, but certainly it, it could be. Um, but I went ahead and I just uh, punched out the opposite paper um, and I added it to uh, the middle of the card connecting the top and the bottom. Now, like I said, this collection of paper came from um, all of the same designer. So the paper coordinates really nicely together. So even if you do want to mix, mix and match, I think that you'd have no problem uh, making the paper work um, on, you know, several projects um, at a time. Okay, so once I had the heart attached, then I went ahead and I pulled off these little tiny pearls and I adhered them to uh, the top portion of the card. And if you've never used these before, these are uh, pearls that you typically find in your embellishment section of your uh, craft store, um, and they're all attached. And the way that I get them off, you can easily cut them if you wanted to, but I find if I just hold my finger on the edge of the pearl and pull, I can easily easily separate the pearls to add them um, all over the card. And it just makes a really nice addition. And this was a great way to use up these embellishments. I just had probably one strip left. Um, and when I was digging through my stash, I saw these sitting all by themselves. So I thought they would be a great addition to the card. And not only that, then I can finally use them up and clear them out of my uh, supplies. All right, so once I had um, some pearls attached. And, and again, it was just random. I didn't really even count out the pearls. Um, I just kind of put them all over the card. I wanted to go ahead and start working on the inside. And as you recall, we cut a, a matching a piece of cardstock um, and this is going to go on the inside. So that way when you open the card, it matches um, on the outside and inside as well. And it just made a really nice finished card. I had already created a Mother's Day sentiment, and since I didn't have any Mother's Day stamps, I just typed up something on my computer using a fancy font, um, and then printed it out and cut it with one of my dies. Uh, so it, it was just a very simple card, but really, really elegant and just so pretty, perfect for Mother's Day. So when I got the sentiment to add it to uh, the inside of my card, I found that it needed a little bit of a mat because I felt that putting the sentiment right directly on the busy background was just a little bit too much. So I dug into my stash of paper and this is from scrapbook.com. It's called the Harvest Smooth Cardstock. And I found a piece of cardstock uh, that matched perfectly. Uh, this uh, is uh, has some great colors. It had the brown colors and it also had some kind of green teal colors as well that I used for the other card that I created using the other paper that I showed you earlier. So it was a nice little combination. So I went ahead and I adhered my sentiment to the cardstock and then I just trimmed it nicely. I'm using the edge of my guillotine trimmer to measure up against the uh, white cardstock and then I'm just trimming it so I have a small little border. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and glue this to the inside of the card to finish it off. So I hope that you like my uh, tutorial today creating this Mother's Day card using this very intricate die from Life's Craft as well as my new designer paper kit called Vin English Vintage Garden. It really is a beautiful kit and I hope that you check it out. So as always, I'll leave a list of all the products that I've used to create the card along with the links to the store. And if you've enjoyed my video, I would certainly appreciate a thumbs up. All right, everybody. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button before you head out. And as always, we'll see you again next time. All right. Thanks for stopping by.